So we sat down with the Hudsons back in um, February uh, to start doing the planning uh, of, for 2013. But Christopher and Kurt really came on board a, lot, a year ago today, uh, August 29th, at the Farm Progress Show in, in Iowa when we launched the, the, the Pursuit of 300 campaign. So we've been at this one year, but we really only have, we're really at the, the, the end now of the first crop season to understand how these various changes came about. We each provided some, some ideas for Christopher and Kurt to think about. Uh, for instance, increasing their plant population. They've um, been doing, they've been raising higher yields than they've been doing it with 20 inch rows. But we increase, we asked them to think about increasing their plant population. We asked them to think about using new tools, plant tissue analysis, to evaluate how their, how their nutrition program was being utilized by the crop. Mitch, what are some of the other things that we, that we did in addition to that? One thing we looked at, I guess a comprehensive approach, not only looking at hybrid selection, uh, fertility, uh, micros, um, foliar feeding, and then of course fungicide applications. We kind of took that comprehensive approach and put it into what I felt was a solid package and we executed that. I think we did a pretty good job looking at our stain counts, our plant health, and uh, we'll find out what the end result is here in about another month. Well, first of August, we came out, uh, that's why this alleyway is here, is we uh, went out and dug a soil pit so we could look at the root zone. And that's something that Christopher and Kurt had not taken the time to do, but it was a great way to evaluate the, the health of the root system that's feeding this crop. And we got a good report card. The root system was doing its job. The plant tissue analysis was showing that we've got really good balanced nutrition uh, here. And so all signs point toward a really uh, good crop coming forward. Because it was a seamless flow into kind of how we're operating, you know, our, our farming operation the way it is with, you know, we were trying a lot of new innovative things um, and, and kind of being on the cutting edge of trying things, but also making sure it's an economical approach to, to uh, trying those new things. And, and this is really kind of a way that they kind of facilitated all of those things happening with, uh, with at the same time having the expertise that, that uh, you know, Mosaic and the Mosaic's agronomists and personnel have, have to offer. So, uh, you know, it's really kind of something that fit very well in, into what we do already and, and was, was just worked well with our comfort zone. I, I'd had the op opportunity, and we all had opportunities to kind of see soil pits and, and root pits and you know, at, at what other conferences and things of that nature, and those are all always like good learning experiences, but it was neat to actually apply it to our farm and, and, and to ground truth some of the things that we know um, you know, we're supposed to be doing right and be managing from compaction to, uh, to other uh, aspects of planting, uh, you know, getting everything closed up properly and, and, and establishing a, a healthy root system and I'm trying to avoid um, things that would be det detrimental to growth. And, and so what was neat for us was actually uh, being able to see that on our farm where we hadn't done it to that ability nor had done it and had the expertise to, uh, to have people help analyze it with us or point out things that we wouldn't have otherwise seen or noticed. So um, it, it was just neat applying it to our farm. I don't see any reason why we couldn't start developing conclusions shortly after we are able to analyze the yield data and, and could do some overlaying of, of yield data versus the uh, the different management practices within the farm, um, and then you know and then tying that back in into the economical, um, you know, the, the the economical response to the different practices. So really, you know, shortly after harvest, when we have a chance to actually sit down and digest everything, uh, once once the rest of harvest kind of comes to a conclusion. Uh, there's no reason we shouldn't be able to have an opportunity to, to really um, analyze and, and potentially make changes for farm-wide um, implementation in the future. We've given Christopher and Kurt kind of an early look at what their yield is, might be like. Okay, so we used the tool that um, this is just we used took aerial photography in near, near infrared and their green and blue wavelengths and analyzed it and this is it came out in the form of what we call a normalized difference vegetation index so the dark green areas in the field are where the biomass is the highest amount of biomass 
the red areas is less biomass. So translate, this is probably going to be the highest yielding part of the field. This will be a little less, a little lower yielding part of the field. So there's some variations that are here that um, we give, that this was taken on July 25th. So we knew on July 25th there's this kind of variation. And the, Chris, we've had an opportunity to talk with Christopher and Kurt about this. And we've identified some questions that mm -hmm. you guys, will ha they'll have in their mind as they're harvesting now. And uh, be able to look look for some deeper, you know, answer these questions as, they're, as they are harvesting and watching how the, how the yields actually vary. And I think one of the other things that, that we just saw is that what you do to your farm still shows up because this field was once farmed north and south. And you can see those patterns. And now it's farmed east and west. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you do have an impact on how your farm reacts over the years. What else did we pick up? Yeah, in addition, not just the change in direction, but also the way, the tracks in which the farm was managed historically, that you can kind of see the different, and, and this we're talking years ago, managed in, when, when parcels were a lot smaller. And, and uh, so that was, that was another, along the same topic, it was another um, interesting thing to see that it's not just historically in the past three to five years where we've changed directions. It's, we're talking 20, 40, 50 years back. back um, the different management styles are still showing up on the NVDI map. Uh, one of the other neat things that, 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 that in seeing this NVDI um, to kind of compare it to was our variable rate planting um, population map was that if nothing else, um, kind of seeing uh, that that the that the healthier or the more rich spots, the greener spots, don't necessarily cor correlate directly to higher population. So it's not, if nothing else, it kind of affirms that that at least at this point in, in the growing season, when this NVDI map was taken, that uh, it seems like our, our variable rate population map was was done in a way that, that was taking advantage of uh, of its environment. This is the pursuit farm. Uh, this is a total of about how many acres? 100? About 170 acres. And so the north half from here north is really the pursuit portion, and the south half are the standard practices that Christopher and Kurt have been using. So they'll okay. be able to compare and contrast the changes that they did on the north portion to their typical practices.